you are a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors. Um, so you've had quite a bit of experience translating work out of your lab into value creation for society. Tell us a little bit about, in this field of biomedical engineering, what does a startup look like? How long does it take? What is the process by which you can sort of build a startup in this space? Yeah, so firstly, I want to make sure people understand there's certain gene, certain ethos where some people are inventors and some people are entrepreneurs and some people are scientists and so on. And uh, most people do job and life and career. When I was at IIT, actually as a senior, final year a student, uh, like many, I would apply to American colleges. But I heard from a couple of IIT alumni who talked about their entrepreneurship and it just turned me on. Like, oh my God, maybe I could do that. So I dropped the idea of going to graduate school and sell to startup. This is the 70s. 70s. Wow. Now that said, you know, it's India, right? You come from business families, you have certain DNA and you come, I come from a very nerdy academic family. A couple of years I realized that, that I didn't have the gene, but I had the inventive mindset. Anyway, so I did PhD, I love research, I want to educate, I want to mentor, but the entrepreneurship within remains. And I do that surrogately through my students who take idea forward and start a company, which is how we started a company for brain monitoring or another for prosthetics. And even now, there's a conversation going on with a clinical colleague about monitoring the brain un unobtrusively, like say from your ear. Okay. That's a crazy idea. And we are in the process of inventing that. So I think it is something that is in your DNA where you are curious, you are interested, you want to discover. I mean, that's a scientist or an inventor. But there are others who said, yeah, that's good, but I want to make it into product. I want to sell it. I want to distribute it. I want to scale it up. I want to make money. All of that is quite good. And I, you know, it's up to an individual to grab it. What you don't want to do is like a herd, go get a degree that's popular, go get a job, and somehow middle class life is done, right? Then you're not doing this invention and entrepreneurship. Invention and entrepreneurship are both a risk. But when you're young, you know, take your chances, right? And explore. So I, my favorite, I can say that even in it ties to prosthetics, to close the loop. So when I was a graduate student, the first Star Wars movie came. Yeah. And it was in that Star Wars movie, uh, Luke Skywalker, this young man, his arm got cut up by the laser wand with Darth Vader, his, was his father. But anyway, and there they showed a prosthetic arm in that video. I still use it in my talk as a motivator. You know, somewhere a movie, so in fact, I tell students, today's homework to all of you, go and watch first Star Wars movie and you'll see what I'm talking about and it gets you going, right? And what Star Wars, of course, starts with saying, go where no man has gone before. So I just wanted to say that it's, you know, these are, it's movie, it's fun to make a comment like that, but it is life, right? Go where nobody has gone before.